Jay Delsing spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go On the Range with Jay Delsing. On the Range is brought to you by the Gateway Section of the PGA. Hey, good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay Pearlie. Give us an update, man. We can't keep track of you. We have no idea where the hell you are. What are you doing? We know you have a fishing pole connected to you somewhere along the line. I'm up in Monaco, Wisconsin. It's raining like cats and dogs, so that means the flashlight comes out tonight. The uh, the worm bucket, and I'm going night crawling tonight uh, to catch catch my night crawlers to go use those for bait tomorrow. Meat. He's just living the life. What in the hell? Must be nice. When's All the right. last time I night crawl? You should have asked. When's the last time I went night crawler hunting? And and it was many many years ago. And it's a blast. We're not talking about that night crawler hunting. I don't know what you're going to get a shovel and dig up a bunch of worms in the middle of the night. Okay. All right. All right. No, I know the fish no like them, and I love to fish. No shovel necessary. Let's let's move on. All right, cool. Let's move on for sure. All right, so uh, we formatted the show like around the golf. The first segment is called the On the Range segment, and it's brought to you by Vehicle Assurance. 866-341-9255. Sherry Smith is just a terrific person over there. She is running this company. If you need a new warranty or you need some sort of additional coverage for your vehicle, call them today. They are terrific people. They will take care of you. Pearl? You got ten seconds for an update on our social media. It's going really well. You've had somewhere between three hundred thousand and eight hundred thousand uh, downloads of your podcast, and uh, I, I, I think we're uh, trending up. Okay, good. Those I also get want better and better. Yeah, and you time. know, if Pearly has a couple more uh, Michelob Ultras at the beginning of the show instead of waiting to the nineteenth, we'll be over a million by tomorrow. <laughs> hey, that's okay. Yeah, that's all right. Who's checking? We don't know anything. We're close yeah, right exactly. Here. Bob and Kathy Donahue at Donahue Painting and Refinishing are terrific people. They can refresh the inside of your home, the outside of your home. They've got great professional painters and refinishers doing um, terrific work. 314-805-2132. Bob and Kathy, thanks for supporting the show. All right, John. Dan Hicks today. Pretty cool guest, man. I still remember some of the calls. I mean, I remember the last time Tiger won the U.S. Open. This is uh, Father's Day today. Happy Father's Day, by the way, Pearl. Happy Father's Day to you, somebody. This is Father's Day, and this is also Sunday of the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines. And last time we were at Torrey Pines, Pearl, the PJ Tour was there. The U.S. Open was there. Uh, Tiger Woods took down Rocco Mediate with a broken knee and a leg and all sorts of uh, drama, and it was just incredible. And Dan Hicks was right in the middle of that with Johnny Miller, and this year he'll be right in the middle of that with Paul Azinger. It's such a special place. It's so fun to watch it on, on TV. You and I were discussing how much the course has changed through the years. I guess whether you want to call it updating it or PGA Tour improving <clears throat> it or whatever it may be. But I think no matter whether it's back in our, my time, your time, or present time, it's a pretty cool place. Yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. And I think back uh, Father's Day and the uh, and the U.S. Open and those great memories. Pearl, some memories that I had with my dad and your dad fishing and things like that were not necessarily tied to the date of Father's Day, but they, they all come gushing. You know, we both lost our, our, our fathers and um, uh, some special, special times. I probably didn't appreciate it nearly as much as I wish I had at the time, but I sure relish them now. They are fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty special across the board, uh, and it did correspond with the Canadian fishing trip all the time. We'd get to watch the U.S. Open from that from the cabin up in Canada, and it was just an absolute uh, blast. And some of the best times was when your dad and my dad and you and I were up there together. Uh, those are, and I think you and I did a pretty good job of realizing how special those times were. You know, we made we missed. We've missed plenty of things in life, but I think we we got that one kind of halfway right. Yeah, I think we did a halfway decent job. You know, my dad was probably what ten or fifteen years older than your dad or so, and so yeah, he, you know so. we could we could both kind of see the writing on the wall as that my dad was getting a little older. But um, 
Yeah, special. Th- I mean, John, it, it's almost impossible for me to think of my dad without thinking of golf and sports. You know, my dad was a professional baseball player, but it was such a sports just dominated the landscape of our family. Even having three older sisters, you know, we all participated. And um, uh, this, uh, it's a, uh, I'm still grateful for that. I, I, I love. I obviously love the game of golf and hopefully trying to grow it and, and tell people about it, but just the sports and just the, the privilege of being able to play it as long as we did is, uh, yeah, it's awesome. And golf is way special and a little deeper than most others because of the camaraderie. John Smoltz, we had on the show a couple of weeks ago, talked about some of the neatest people he's ever met have been on the golf course. Absolutely. He, he, he had a lot of, well, obviously, it's huge in his life right now how dedicated he is trying to get his uh, golf game to the next level. Um, and so it's 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 cool. Uh, yeah, just just positive across the board. I'm glad you did a little extra on the Father's Day. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Torrey Pine's going to be a beast, Pearl. I don't know if we even want to talk about it. It is going to be a beast. The one thing that I want to tell folks that they may or may not know, but we are Midwestern kids. We go out to Southern Cal. It's not always all that warm by the water. No. Especially in June, Pearl, there's this thing called the marine layer, which is basically a gigantic, massive cloud bank that doesn't let anything in except a little bit of wind. And it, there's no sun, and it's cold, and you sit on that, you know, right at sea level, and that ball doesn't go that far, I can tell you that. It's it's a very hard game, and uh, I'll tell you how hard it is. One of the first times I played, it was with UCLA, and um, we're playing in a group and we're waving the people on to the first green. That's how tough and how long it's playing. And one of our teammates, Brad Bell, hits his second shot and catches one of the guys I'm playing with right in the noggin. I mean, right, right back to the forehead. I can laugh because he survived it. That ball came ricocheting down about 30, 40 yards back at Brad, which Brad was disappointed at. This poor, this poor bugger's down on his knees. I'm thinking, I knew this was a hard hole, but I didn't think it was going to be this damn hard. I didn't know he was going to have to come to the hospital and get stitches, for God's sake. Hey, hey, you know what? He, he was a trooper. He stood up, dusted himself off, and kept on playing. I'm well, like, that's oh because, God. well, what was he going to do? Jump on his cell phone and call for help? I mean, we were sitting out there. It was like, that dude, we'll just leave you here to die. We got more holes to play. <laughs> That's, that's that's the hardest hole I've ever seen. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I told our buddy Trevor Dodds we'd give him a little plug. He has got a team, an international team golf tournament that he's pushing. Um, all expenses paid trip to Portugal. If you go to IPGolfUSA.com, you can learn more about it. You can talk to your PGA professional about it. We've got a great new association with uh, the PGA of America, our section pros, the men and women. We're going to be talking a lot about them and we um uh would like anybody that wants to maybe head out for an all expensive paid trip in october to portugal ipgolfusa.com learn more about it talk to your pga professional and um grab a buddy and see if you can't qualify for this rascal well trevor's a great guy i hope he makes it work yep he's pushing it hard and uh pearl the tip of the cap today was an easy one first of all Tell the folks a little bit about your experience with uh, Colin and Brandy over at uh, Dean Team of Kirkwood. Well, they were fantastic. You know the way I am with driving cars. Oh, I'm kind of like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to bring you a check. I don't want I don't want any, want any warranty stuff, and I would just want to make sure that it's kind of perfect. And those guys were fantastic. You know, Colin gave me a little cross-eyed here and there just to tease me a little bit. Brandy couldn't have been sweeter. And I'll tell you what, Jay, I love the truck, and as you know, I've been traveling all over the place. It's the first truck I've ever had that tows the boat instead of gets pushed by the boat. So it's, uh, it's kind of a perfect combination. I love it. <laughs> that old truck of yours sucked. That thing was just so damn miles. wobbly. What the hell? Thank God. All right. So um, the tip of the cap today goes to our dads. You know, it's appropriate. It's Father's Day. And um, um, miss my dad every single day. These uh, men we all looked up. Uh, too very much. We try to emulate them in so many ways so that that goes, our tip of the cap goes out to them. And it's brought to you by Colin and Brandy over at the Dean Team of Kirkwood. Kirkwood 314-966-0303. All right, so that's going to wrap up the Unrange segment. Don't go anywhere because Dan Hicks is coming your way on the front nine. This is Golf with Jay Delsing.
Hello, friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend, Jay Delsing. Did you know that the Gateway section of the PGA is comprised of over 335 members and over 200 facilities? I didn't either. Every time you drive up to your local country club, public facility, or driving range, there's an excellent chance that it is run and operated by one of the many members of our section. Since the time I was first introduced to the game, a PGA of America professional was there giving lessons, running the golf shop, and growing the game. The many men and women of the Gateway PGA section spend countless hours behind the scenes doing hundreds of little things to make our golf experience enjoyable. PGA Reach, Drive, Chip, and Putt, PGA Junior League, Rankin Jordan Golf Program, those are just a couple of the many programs run and supported by our section. To learn more or to find out how you can get involved, go to gatewaypga.org, the Gateway PGA, growing the game we love. Are you looking for a great career? Do you like meeting nice people, working with your hands, and fixing things inside the home? Marco and Appliance Parts Company would like to encourage you to consider a high-paying career in major appliances repair and service. Major appliance service technicians are in very high demand. Major appliance techs work regular hours and make excellent money. They work local, in their own communities, and are home every night. It is an incredibly stable industry and highly rewarding work. Discover more about your new career in major appliance services today by contacting a local appliance service company in your hometown. In southern Illinois, contact Jeff Klein at Mount Vernon TV and Appliance Center. The phone number is 618-242-1579. Marcona Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and proud distributor of General Electric Parts. I am delighted to welcome Marie de Villa to the Golf with Jay Delsing show. I'm sure you know where it is, but in case you don't, Marie de Villa is a landmark out in West St. Louis County. It's located on the corner of Clayton and Weidman Roads. It's also on 21 beautiful rolling acres right on the way out to Queenie Park. It's a country club-like atmosphere. It's iconic, and it's absolutely gorgeous. When my dad died and my mom decided she didn't want to live alone, Marie de Villa was the first place we called. When we pulled up, we were greeted at the front door by the owner, and he took us around on a tour of the facility. We learned that there are one, two, and three-bedroom villas that you can live in, and there's also 24-hour care in the East, West, and the Waterford buildings. So Marie de Villa had everything that my mom wanted. One of the things that stood out in my mind as well was the way the family-owned business treats their guests. That's right. They refer to them as guests, but they treat them like family. So if you're in the process of trying to make a tough decision for this next part of life, you got to visit Marie de Villa. This is local. This is family. And this is St. Louis. This is Marie de Villa. Come be our guest. When things come out of left field... Having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101 to see how they can help you stay in the game. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314-398-0101. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. After my knee replacement, I was able to swing the golf club again without any pain. SSM Health Physical Therapy guided me through the rehab process. When I was ready, one of their specially trained KVS certified physical therapists put me on the 3D motion capture system. It was awesome. They evaluated my posture, alignment, and the efficiency of my swing. They gave me golf-specific exercises to help my swing become more efficient and repeatable. Call them at 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Tell them Jay sent you for special pricing. Your therapy, our passion. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The Front Nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. Pearlie's with me. Brad Barnes Meat is taking great care of us here at the ESPN Studios. We're headed to the Front Nine. It's brought to you by our friends at the Ascension Charity Classic. It is the newest, the latest uh, event on the Champions Tour schedule. It's September 6th through 12th here in St. Louis. Um, And it is just fantastic. I can't wait to get the city involved. I can't wait to get the 
tour here. It's just going to be fantastic. Two weeks before the Ryder Cup. Um, yeah, so thanks for the folks at Ascension for sponsoring the show. And, uh, man, I can't wait to play in it, Pearl. I can't wait to have you on the bag. It's going to be special. I'm out there jogging, doing push-ups. i got to get myself in shape so I can even handle it. Are you going to be taking the little bag, the little uh, pencil pencil bag, or are we going to be taking the tote the Big Daddy? No, I think we'll probably tote the Big Daddy with some of my favorite books and stuff and Lucky Rocks in there, too. What do you think? Hey, meet, meet, meet. Make sure you're walking the, along the uh, the ropes just in case I go down. <laughs> oh, I'll be there. Don't you? I'm first to fill in for you. We've so. got a caddy right. down. Absolutely. That would be great. Um, guys, we've got um, the voice of NBC Golf. Uh, um, 11 Olympic Games he's been a part of started in 1996 in Atlanta uh, he also has done work with the NFL uh, just a great guy Dan Hicks let's go listen to this interview I had with Dan Hicks makes a mighty lash out at the bottom can you get lucky and get the right distance look at this going to funnel down that hill that's a pretty darn good shot one last bullet for Rocco Mediate to try to avoid. Expect anything different? Rocco, you've got Tiger for 18 holes tomorrow. Dan Hicks is brought to you by Golden Tee. My career feels so insignificant when I get to prep for guys like you. I mean, you've done 11 Olympic Games. You get to anchor almost every significant golf event, you know, on the PGA Tour schedule. The U.S. Open, the Ryder Cup, President's Cup, FedEx Cup. You got to sit with Johnny Miller for years, and now you got Zing. Um, Notre Dame football, the NFL, gosh, we could go on and on, and your Olympic calls, but we'll go get to that in a minute. But, Dan, just talk a little bit about – I know you love the game of golf. You played for a long time. Talk to us about just the, the young part of your life and the journey of getting involved in the game. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I, I I didn't really grow up playing a ton of golf. I dabbled with it, but I played you know baseball, basketball were my two big sports. I played a little football as well all the way through high school. And then after I, I – then I played in basketball leagues uh, around town where I grew up in Tucson, Arizona, and I – finally hurt my knee a couple times and I just thought you know what I, I just need something competitive to kind of throw myself into and I living in Arizona you can play golf year round so I really started throwing myself into the game and that's when I really discovered how much I loved it I, I always really liked it but playing the game as you know Jay you played at the highest level but even even amateurs like me and, and guys like me that don't really play that high a brand of golf, when you play the game, you realize how hard it is and how unbelievable these guys that play it on the PGA Tour level and the world-class level and the, and the girls for that matter as well. So I kind of started falling into it when I, um, when I you know, even in Arizona, I, I just was so interested in it. I always did golf stories when I was in at uh, the, the local NBC affiliate there. And then it just, and I went to CNN after that. I used to cover the major championships, so I grew even further deeply in love with the, with the game and covering it and just being involved with it. And then when I got to NBC, uh, they hired me and they thought I'd be a good fit for golf. So that's kind of how it all started. And, I, and I, I've told people many, many times that of all the sports I've done, if they told me, you know, that you could only do one for the rest of your career, what would it be? There'd be no contest. It'd be golf because I just think it's uh, it's such an incredible game and, and even even more fun and 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 cool to broadcast you know dan you do such a great job it's such a relaxing soothing voice it's become part of the you know the golf landscape you turn on an nbc broadcast and you're there talk a little bit about johnny miller i had the opportunity to play with him and um i honestly uh well i just want to hear your opinion he he was abrasive to a lot of folks yeah, he, he really was, and but that's that comes with a guy, and I, I've made the analogy many times in talking about Johnny during his playing career, and you played with him, and you know him, and you know how he's played. He was very aggressive. He went after flags, and that's kind of how he did his broadcast career. And when you go after flags, whether it's with a microphone or a or a five iron you're going to make some bogeys, and you're going to make some doubles. And that's kind of how Johnny um, talked about it. And the more and more I thought about it, it's exactly right. So you're going, 
you, some of the things that you say when you when you take on that approach are not going to come off quite the way you wanted them, or they're not going to come out sounding the way you wanted them. So you are going to, for lack of a better word, piss off some folks, <laughs> especially some players that think, well, what is he? You know, what is he? How, how does he know what's going on inside my head? That's the biggest thing that I got. But what I would always tell these guys, Jay, through the years, was you know what. You're entitled to your opinion. Like Johnny is paid to give his opinion, and he's he's paid to be to give his honest opinion. And that might not only that might not, not always jive with yours, but that's what we're talking, and that's what makes a great analyst who's not afraid to be totally honest, give his opinion because that's what he's being paid for, and not worry about a player or a player's wife or girlfriend or grandmother watching the show, his first and foremost responsibility is to those people watching at home. And I think that's what made him so popular. People picked up on that. They were ser- he was serving them, serving them alone, not serving the players, and that's what made him such a popular guy. You know, Dan, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because he was really kind of the first guy that ever – "Quote unquote," told it like it was, and with with without real regard to to like you said, pissing off the players, and he pissed off a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And you know, it takes guts to do that, and not everybody wants to do that. And you see so often people just coming in, like like former players, and I don't care if it's golf, football, basketball, whatever sport. When they first start in the broadcast business, they have a hard time, as we say, crossing over that line. And what I mean by that is crossing over being a broadcaster. You're not a player anymore. Some guys never get over it, and some women, for that matter, they just they just never make the crossover. So they're always kind of got one foot in the playing world and one foot, and they're and they're happy to do that. They don't they're not comfortable going across. But what separates the really good analysts is is the people that are able to cross over and and do what I was referring to earlier, your responsibility, which is to serve the people and and be a broadcaster. You're you're there because you played the game and you can relate situations that no one else can because you had a five iron with a major championship on the line and you delivered or you didn't deliver. But your sole responsibility is to tell people what you thought and and that that's what kind of separates those people that aren't able to make that, that crossover from those who do. Dan, did any at, at any point in time did anything cuz cuz there's one difference that I've noticed in the tiny little toe that I've stepped in the broadcasting world. There's such a difference between us and professional broadcasters like yourself, polished. You guys know what's going on. Were there any certain times where you might have held your breath or thought, "Oh boy, you know, that I, I wonder what's going to happen and what are the repercussions are going to be for that situation?" Be- what I said personally? For what Johnny would say. Oh, for we're still in the Johnny thing. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> to answer your question, yes, absolutely. There were numerous times when that happened. But what Johnny was so good about doing was was not was being able to kind of cr- not cross that line. Sorry, we got a dog barking in the background. Yeah, no here. problem. That's perfect. That. <laughs> but anyway, it's real <laughs> life, right? Yeah, but um, what he was so good at doing was not getting across that line to where – it was really, really bad, and that he might have needed to apologize. There were some, there were some times that did come up where, again, I think he was, you know, if if you really knew what he was trying to say versus what came out, it was, it was, it was really not the same thing. But he was so good at getting to that line and not crossing it. It came very close at times, but that's what made him. That's what made him must kind of hear television. Is that people were waiting to hear what he said next. And, and I'll be honest, and Johnny will be the first to tell you that sometimes he felt the pressure to say something that was almost controversial every show because that's kind of what the Johnny Miller brand was. And we talked about it, and I said, Johnny, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fall into that trap. You should just be yourself. And if a show comes along or a tournament comes along where you're on the air for four days and you can't really kind of light something up, you know, to the, to, the, to the way that people are used to hearing Johnny Miller light it up, that's okay. And I think he kind of – I think he listened to what I said and the advice I had, but – he was uh, he was one of a kind, and uh, I miss him all the time. Paul Azinger has been fantastic. I don't think there's anybody else. That I, in fact, I know there's nobody else that could have gone into Johnny's big shoes and and made everybody I think at home feel pretty comfortable that uh, they were getting another really high quality analyst at NBC. So uh, it's been it's been a nice transition. 
Oh, it's a, it's it's a nice treat to hear Azinger, uh, you know what Zing has to say. But Dan, one of the things that dawns on me is the your ability to kind of manage these situations. You know what I mean? And and you're it, it's it's not an easy job that you have to do. First of all, you want the sport to be able to breathe and and kind of tell the story. But you're kind of the the ringmaster up there with the different personalities and going back into the holes and the guys on the ground. Talk about that a little bit, but because you do it so effortlessly and so beautifully, but that's not easy. Matt, nah, thanks, Jay. It, 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 is, it is an acquired, it's a real craft to, to be the traffic cop, and Jim Nance does it, does it as well as anybody's ever done it, Joe Buck, any, any, kind of, any kind of play-by-play guy that's done golf. It's a little different in golf versus the other sports because there are so many voices that have to be heard and need to be heard throughout the show and you're kind of that that uh, that conduit that you kind of all the traffic passes through because we have elements that we need to do and then we need to get it back to the course and we're constantly transitioning from from voice to voice but the great thing about NBC golf I think is that it is a it's not just me doing it it's a running conversation between everybody and what we've always prided ourselves on doing um, and, and, and kind of giving it that conversation piece going from Roger Malpe over to Gary Koch over to, over to Zinger and me. It's almost like you're at home listening to a conversation between guys just talking golf. And I think that we know each other so well. All of us have been together so long, especially Raj and Gary Koch and, and, uh, and Zinger's just meshed right in, is that we, I, almost, I can sense when Roger wants to talk, needs to talk, and I can, I can kind of sense when, because we can't see each other. And so that's difficult in, in answering your question. It's difficult to not jump on each other give people and give the and give the event the breathable space it needs because it's so easy to fill it up wall to wall right i've told myself numerous times thousands of times you know let's 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 take it back a notch here i think we're we're talking too much and a lot of times i'll get on the talk back with our producer tommy roy who's the best in the business in my opinion and I'll say, hey, I think we're, you know, do you get the sense that we're talking too much? Don't you think we should pull back here? And so we all kind of reset, and we all kind of let the let the let the uh, the tournament breathe because people, we're there to enhance it, but we're not there to take it over. You know, the images, it's television, there's pictures, there's, you know, there's not a lot to add sometimes. You know, Dan, that's one of the things I was getting to is you guys, the chemistry that you have and you being the head, kind of the leader of that, you get the sense of where to go. And sometimes you get personalities that can clash and you guys do a phenomenal job of putting all that aside. And really, uh, I had Faraday on a while back and he said this as well, that you guys are so committed to putting on a quality show and it's the best. It, it, It just shows forth. Yeah. And, and Faraday, by the way, has been an incredible piece with us, you know, in the years that he's joined us. Tommy Roy, who hires everybody and figures out the chemistry, is so concerned, and rightly so, about making sure that it's going to be the right piece to complement the other guys that are already there. And Faraday has been perfect. He's given us a real sense of humor. He's given us a real sense of irreverence sometimes. Maybe sometimes we take ourselves too serious. So he's just been an incredible piece to have. And you're right. It's, you know, there, there, there are times to be serious and there are times to, you know, kind of let your hair down a little bit and have some fun because this is sports, you know, and, and sometimes, uh, sometimes we might take ourselves a little bit too seriously. And Verity's been a great component of that to kind of lighten the, lighten the mood a lot. Oh, man, he is. You, as far as lightening the mood, you really never know what's going to come out of his mouth. So. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. you got to listen. I find myself having to listen to Faraday just about as closely as I had to listen to Johnny, because if you're not listening uh, closely, sometimes, you know, his stuff will go right over your head. <laughs> it's so it's so true, Dan. All right, cool. That's going to wrap up the first half of this Dan Hicks interview, but don't go anywhere. On the back nine, we'll give you the conclusion of uh, – our, inter- our time sitting down with Dan Hicks. Uh, this is Golf with Jay Delsing. If you have a car and you're struggling to get some protection for that car, let me recommend Vehicle Assurance. 1-866-341-9255 is their number. They have been bus- in business for over 10 years and have a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is one of the reasons why they have over 1 million satisfied customers. They are known for their painless claims process, 
and the premium vehicle protection. So whatever that car looks like, they can help you. You can find them at VehicleAssurance.com or call them again at 866-341-9255 for a free quote. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. Don't miss the hottest rookie class in PGA Tour Champions history. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club September 6th through the 12th. Join legends Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson, and Hale Irwin to celebrate the PGA Tour Champions' newest event. Professional golf returning to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, pro-am foursomes on sale now. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. I am with my buddy Joe Sheezer from USA Mortgage. Hey, Jay, how are you? Doing great, Joe. Thanks so much for the support of the show. Ah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, congratulations. This is uh, your third year, and we're really proud to be a sponsor all three years since the very beginning. It's a great show, and we look forward to it every Sunday morning. Well, thanks a bunch. Tell us just a little bit about USA Mortgage and what you can do for people. Well, USA Mortgage is a uh, ESOP. It's an employee-owned company, so over a 1,000 families here in St. Louis work for the company. So if you want an opportunity to patronize a, a local company, please call USA Mortgage 314-628-2015 and I'll be more than happy to sit down with you, go over your options, discuss all the different programs that are available and give you an opportunity to support a local company. That's awesome, Joe. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, Jay. Thank you. I am speaking with David Cantrell this morning from down in Cape Girardeau on the Gateway Spotlight. David, tell us about the cool stuff that you have going on in Cape Girardeau with with uh, with golf. Well, to tell you the cool stuff, it has to, there has to be a little bit of a leeway into it, Jay. And that's, uh, I've been a member, a PGA member since 1998. Started out in Southern California uh, before moving back to my hometown, Cape Girardeau, and being the head professional and general manager at Cape Country Club. Um, I fell in love with the Navy. I was, I was, excuse me. I fell in love with the game of golf while I was in the Navy, and uh, actually retired as a Navy captain, a special operations officer for 30 years. Uh, so when I heard of the Hope program, it really obviously struck a chord with me uh, because of golf and because of the service. Uh, I love the country. Um, unfortunately, uh, two years ago, June 9th, 9th of 2019. Um, a gentleman um, failed to yield and struck me at a 90-degree angle while I was on my Harley Davidson and basically tore my leg off, um, so from my knee down. I was in the hospital for a month and a half, underwent uh, nine different surgeries, and uh, was on crutches for a year while I had some other complications. And I finally got into my prosthetic of June of 2020. And um, being in a mindset of a special operations officer, um, I just felt like, uh, I'm scratching all that, um, the mindset that I have been raised with and, and was served with in, this, in the service in the special operations field is one of can do and can't stop. And so on June 20th, on, on, in June of 2020, I went to the driving range at Delhousie Golf Club, where I'm a member, and attempted to swing the club for the first time since the accident. And actually hit the ball, first ball, relatively well. And it caught my breath. It truly did because of where I was as pretty much a scratch golfer to what I was facing now with a prosthetic, left prosthetic leg. I just didn't know if I was going to be able to play again. And golf is a passion, like some other sports that I have are passions. So the ability to swing the club and hit the ball kind of lifted, kind of gave me some part of my life back. And I thought of all the other people, like me, that I've never thought of before, because it's really not a club that you want to be in. But once you're in it, it's pretty tight. And so everybody kind of shares their experiences. And I wanted to share mine with you all. And I want to share it, continue to share it with other adaptive players. Um, I'm actually participating in a golf uh, clinic tomorrow from 1 to 3 here where I'm working with hanger prosthetics and orthotics 
and they have patients that are coming to the range, and we're going to hit some balls and have some fun. Uh, I took my I took my prosthetist up to St. Louis for the adaptive training that the PGA put on, and he became kind of a celebrity there because the pros were asking all these questions that he could answer as far as physiology goes and the equipment that they use and the things that they can do with the prosthetic that a golfer needs, like torsion adapters, the different kind of feet. And so all these things, you know, they learned a whole side of it other than from the golf side. And, and what I kind of look at hope, the program of hope, because hope is what fuels the human spirit. And as long as you have hope, then all cannot be lost. And I'm kind of unique in the fact that I'm on both sides of the tee now. I'm finding my own way, hitting balls and taping myself while helping others find their own way as well with the, uh, with the golf game as an adaptive golfer. Dude, so that for, is... that, for those reasons, I'm a, I'm a really good ho- poster boy. <laughs> wow, David, thanks so much for sharing that story. Con- congratulations. Thank you for your service. First of all, and thank you for, for doing what you're doing and growing the game of golf in Cape Girardeau. Absolutely. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring Golden Tee to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, The Ultimate Virtual Golfing Experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentee.com to learn more. I want to tell you about Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. My friend Colin Burnt runs the store over there, and he helped me buy a used Volkswagen for my daughter, Joe when she turned 16. We've had the car for over a year. It's running great. It's nice and safe, and we've taken it there to get it serviced just recently. Pearly, that does the show with me, just bought a nice Toyota truck from Collins. So I want you to know that if there's any sort of vehicle you need, anything at all, you can get it at the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. You can call them at 314 314- Nine six six zero three zero three, or visit them at Dean Team VW Kirkwood dot com. We're halfway there. It's time for the back nine on golf with Jay Delsing. The back nine is brought to you by Fogelbach Agency with Farmers Insurance. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. Pearlie's with me. Brad Barnes is taking care of us, pressing buttons and doing all sorts of stuff here at the ESPN studios. And we're headed to the back nine. Brought to you by the Fogelbach Agency with Farmers. 314-398-0101. If you need any sort of coverage for your business, for your employees, for your your car, your home, Ed Fogelbach is a He's just a really cool guy. He's a, a guy that's just uh, new to the game of golf in the last two or three years, and he's just having a blast with it. He's a terrific person, so give him a call. All right, so Pearl, we are going right back to the second half of the interview with Dan Hicks, the voice of NBC Golf. The Americans have to win Golden here if Phelps is to keep his hopes alive of surpassing Mark Spitz in the greatest Olympics ever. Jason Lezak is going to have to make up some ground on Elaine Bernard, who stands 6 feet 5 and can absolutely fly. Lezak is closing a little bit on Bernard. Can the veteran chase him down and pull off a shocker here? Well, there's no doubt that he's tightening up. Bernard is losing some ground. Here comes Lezak. Unbelievable at the end. He's got it. Dan Hicks is brought to you by Golden Tee. Dan, let's talk a little bit about the Olympics for a minute. Um, you've been involved in 11 different games. I think you started in 96 with the games that were down in Atlanta. But one thing has stood out in my mind. I'll never forget this call. I think it was in 2008, and I think you were calling the freestyle uh, 4x100 Olympics. And we had the Michael Phelps drama and all of his championship gold medals and everything. And take us back a little bit to that call um, when the U.S. came 
came roaring back, and I, I, I don't know uh, this guy's first name. I think it's – was it Lezak? Was was he our – Yeah, Jason Lezak. Man, Absolutely, I could, yeah. I can remember yeah, I'll, you I'll saying – pick it up from there. It was – it was uh, first of all, it was a lot of hype. Phelps had won uh, eight medals at the previous Olympics in 2004 in Athens, and he was going into China with another run at Mark uh, – another run at uh, Mark Spitz's seven golds at a single game, which was thought to be at one point impossible to surpass. Yet here is Phelps with a goal of doing just that. So that's the hype that preceded the whole thing before it started. He gets in the 400 IM on the first night, wins it with a world record, and that was no problem. That was expected. But the second event was the men's 4 by 100 freestyle relay. And it was on Monday night. And this was one of the eight races, one of two of the eight races that was really dicey. The, uh, the 100 fly, which he later won by a fingernail, uh, in the last second was was what kept it the streak going, but this was just as big of a question mark on his uh, you know on his uh, program that year. So anyway, the French the French team was like the huge favorites. They they came in and I was breaking it down with Rowdy Gaines, who's uh, one of the most incredible analysts I've ever heard. Passion he has for swimming is is remarkable. But he's breaking down the race and basically what we say before they go in the pool in the four in the four in the four man relay was you know. Jason Lezak, who's been this perennial guy who's been a part of Olympic teams as a professional relay racer, is what a lot of people called him kind of tongue-in-cheek because he just didn't do anything individually and he hadn't really distinguished himself in any kind of big, huge moment. He needed a lead over this guy named Alain Bernard to have any kind of shot at winning gold and keeping Phelps' hopes alive, right? So he gets in the pool, and lo and behold, he's, he's got a lead on Lezak, and he's, he's increasing the lead, and then... All hell breaks loose, to just to sum it up. This, the, the guy starts tightening up, the French guy starts tightening up, and Lezak starts, starts pulling up on him, and we can't believe what's happening. And I go to a level on my, on my you know, throat as far as voice, as far as stress goes, of which I still haven't reached again and hopefully never will because I almost lost my voice for the rest of the Olympics. So Lezak beats him at the end by one one hundredth of a second. The truck is going crazy. We're going crazy. Rowdy's about falling out of his chair of the broadcast booth. It is the most unbelievable moment that I've ever been a part of in this business, and there's been a lot of them. But that electric moment there in Beijing, China, in 2008, was off the charts. And so he, you know, the rest is history. He went on to win eight gold medals, and and we'll never see anything like that again. I, I really, really believe that. Dan, I just have to frame this for our listeners because I'm not a swimmer. I, I mean, I like a pool and a, and a cocktail, you know. And for you, for that to stick out in my mind, for that memory, that was really special. I, and I'll never forget it. Oh, yeah. I still, people, people still come up to me, you know, that I don't know that will bring that up and they'll inevitably say, well, what are your, you know, what's your favorite moment? Or I get asked, what's your favorite moment in broadcasting? And there really are two that, and they were two months apart. It was Tiger Woods at the U.S. Open at Torrey Pines in 2008 doing what he did. And two months later, Phelps running the table in, in Beijing. And so I don't know what's in store for the back nine of my career here, but it'll be very hard to beat that summer of 2008 and those two months which are which are just moments and you know and Tiger and Phelps remind me of one another in so many different ways and have the privilege of kind of taking both of their careers from when they first started off we've been doing Tiger since he was an amateur champion and Phelps since he was a 15 year old to take them all the way through that it's just been a, a ride of a lifetime I'm visiting with Dan Hicks NBC broadcaster this is golf with Jay Delsing and Dan uh, we just got to touch a little bit on Tiger because um, we all are sending him, you know, our very best in his recoveries, but he has done for our sport Oh my gosh! I, I mean, just for me personally, to watch what he's done to, to Jack and Arnold have absolutely put the sport on the map. But Tiger made it cool to play, and Tiger took us to an entirely different level, as far as I can tell. No doubt about it, and it, it's hard to put it into to quantify it, Jay. But you know, you just ask the players, like 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 you played, and and you know how important he was to the game. You know the money that went into everybody's pockets because of what Tiger did and, and what he was able to generate from just 
you know, people that never watched golf. That's the true test, right? Those are the those are the athletes that move the needle that 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 can get that can draw people in that that really don't even care much about golf or don't make it a regular thing to watch it. He brought those people in. I cannot tell you how many times doing a tournament through the years. The first question they'll be like, "Oh, Dan, what's your next tournament?" I go, "Well, we're going to Bay Hill." And it was like, "Is Tiger playing?" I mean, it was just like the first question. And if he wasn't playing, it was like, "Oh, uh, well, you know, all right, I don't know if I'll watch." You know. And then it got into the weekend, and if Tiger was in contention. The television ratings. The guy, as they have always said, you know, didn't move. He was the needle, and he was. He, uh, you know, there's never been another golfer like that, and I don't think that there's ever been another athlete who's impacted his sport as much as Tiger has in golf, and that that's saying a lot. It, it really is, Dan. And if you think about the the chasm that Tiger fell in personally, I mean, I asked Faraday this. I'd love to get your opinion as well. What would the record books in the PGA Tour look like had there not been that, you know, four or five year, gosh, you could even say seven year period where he just kind of fell off the planet? Right, right, with the injuries that ensued and, and you know, the the way he had to kind of go into hibernation and get his life back together. It, but you know what? I, I think that that just, that just feeds the legend and, and feeds the unbelievable story that Tiger has lived. And I, I said this after his, his, la- his accident, his recent car accident, which, thank God he's alive, um, that if you went into... If you went into a Hollywood producer's office and you wrote Tiger's life story and you included everything all the way through this accident and you gave it to him and this guy didn't know anything about Tiger Woods, he'd read it and say, this didn't happen. This, none of this stuff happened, did it? This isn't true. And you would say, yeah, it is true. I think it's that unbelievable. This, this last unfortunate car accident just got me thinking... This guy is just on another level of 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 the of the ups and downs and and the twists and turns and the way he's been able to overcome so many different things. If he's able to somehow get out of this, and again, that's not you know our first wish is for him to be able to walk and hang out and play with his kids and and live a normal life. But if if this if this is the last chapter and he somehow comes out of this, I mean. You can you can you gonna have to rewrite the last chapter of the Tiger Journey, which is the most unbelievable thing we've ever seen in sports. You get the movie ready, right? I mean, everybody. Oh my God! Oh ago. yeah. Yep. Dan, I so appreciate. It. I know that you're busy with the French Open. I know you're headed out to Torrey Pines to. It's kind of the anniversary of uh, Tiger's last U.S. Open win in 08. I, I so appreciate you taking the time. Please keep doing the great stuff you're doing. We love listening to you, and thanks for jumping on with me. Jay, my pleasure. Great to catch up with you. All the best to you, and uh, look forward to chatting uh, down the road with you again. All right, so, John, there's something about Dan's voice. Jim Nance does the same thing. It just it makes me look around feeling like my TV's on. You know, yeah, there's a tournament it, on. Like, yeah. what, what, it, it is, it's, there's something that is just kind of gets you in that mindset. It's, some, it's pretty special. Well, that it seems to be the trait behind the, the special commentators, you know, through all of life. You know, for me, it was you know Harry Carey early on, and you just you just kind of you just wanted it on all the time. Didn't necessarily listen to what they said per se sometimes, but it was just nice to have it in the background. And obviously, what they have to say is awfully strong as well. He had he's had some phenomenal calls, and it's fun to listen to him talk about some of his calls. Because he's just as animated now uh, talking about him and reliving them as, as he was when he was actually making some of the uh, the sports calls. It's, it's fun to hear those guys that passionate. Yeah, Pearl, don't you feel like sometimes we forget that these guys are human? You know, it's like yeah, they're, sure. they're, they're just winging it, you know, and all of a sudden this moment comes kind of out of left field, so to speak, and they're as much caught uh, in the moment as we are. Well, I loved when he talked about the uh, – the, the race, the, the swim race with Phelps, because he said, I was excited. Uh, Rowdy Gaines was excited. The truck's cra- going crazy. The camera guys are going crazy. That, that just got me all fired up. I'm like, I can just remember it again, because I, I, like you, I watched it. All of America was riveted to it. And that's special times. As you said, uh, the other commentators have said some of the same stuff. Jim Nance, just when he got too, totally into it. It's... Uh, yeah, they're, they're fans along with us, but they just get to uh, describe it, and they do a pretty good job. 
Yeah, they do a great job. Well, that's going to wrap up the back nine, but don't go anywhere. We'll have more golf with Jay Delsing on the Michelob Ultra 19th hole. This is Bill DeWitt the third, president of the St. Louis Cardinals, and you're talking to Jay Delsing. And wait, oh, sorry, what's the name of the show? Uh, golf with Jay Delsing. Oh, all right, let me start it. <laughs> hey, Jay Delsing here for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros use on the PGA Tour. That's right. SSM Health Physical Therapy has Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screen on you, as well as putting you on the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Trust me, I've been on it. It is really cool. Proper posture and alignment can help you keep it right down the middle. There's 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call them at 800 518 1626 or visit them on the web at ssmphysicaltherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. Are you looking for a great career? Do you like meeting nice people, working with your hands, and fixing things inside the home? Marcon Appliance Parts Company would like to encourage you to consider a high paying career in major appliances repair and service. Major appliance service technicians are in very high demand. Major appliance techs work regular hours and make excellent money. They work local and their own communities and are home every night. It is an incredibly stable industry and highly rewarding work. Discover more about your new career in major appliance services today by contacting a local appliance service company in your hometown. In St. Louis or St. Charles County, contact Brian Propes at AAA Home Services. The phone number is 636-299-3871. Marcona Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and proud distributor of General Electric Parts. I know you've heard me talk about Whitmore Country Club. I want to thank them for supporting the show again for the third year and tell you things are going great for them. There's 90 holes of golf when you join at the Whit- at Whitmore Country Club. The membership provides you access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Lynx of Dardeen, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. Cart fees are included. There's no food or beverage minimums and no assessments. 24-hour fitness center is fantastic. There's two large pool complexes uh, and three tennis courts. Stop in the golf shop. you got to see my buddy Bummer. He is an absolute great guy that would love to help you with your game and love to show you around um, the uh, facility. He and his staff uh, run golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, couples events. There's live music. There's uh, uh, great dining opportunities out there, outside, inside. Anything you and your family need golf-wise, fun-wise, visit WhitmoreGolf.com or call them at 636 636- 926-9622. Professional golf returns to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club, September 6th through the 12th. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, and pro-am foursomes are on sale now. All proceeds go to North St. Louis County Charities. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com or call 314-938-2828. PGA Tour Golf is back in the loo. The Ascension Charity Classic. Let your local farmer's insurance agent, Ed Fogelbach, put his experience to work for you. Ed Fogelbach proudly serves St. Louis area families and businesses and is ready to review your existing policies or provide a no-obligation quote today. Call the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101 to get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. All right, this is Golf with Jay Delsing, and we are back, and we are back on the 19th hole, sponsored by our friends at Michelob Ultra. Man, mm-hmm. this Ultra tastes good. I know, Pearly, you got one in hand. And, um, gosh, the Dan Hicks thing, um, uh, now that I, I've, I've known Dan a little bit, the, there's something special about knowing how the job affects him. And this, the call that he talked about with, you know, with Tiger in 08 at Torrey and then with um, – Lee Zach in the in the four by one hundred relays in two thousand eight, and Michael Phelps winning eight gold medals and all that. And there's something endearing to me, John, when a guy like that kind of lets in a little bit of how special that really was to him. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it makes him uh, very human, uh, very re- re- very relatable. 
I thought he did a great job uh, talking about that. And, and what a cool thing for him to have that awareness that he's kind of been talking about and, and explaining uh, so much of the key uh, moments of both Tiger and Michael Phelps' career. I, I didn't. I never put that together like that. That's pretty cool stuff because there's there's two of the two goats, isn't it? Oh no, no question. I mean, we got to get Michael on the on the show because he loves a game of golf, and no one's going to touch the records Michael Phelps has. I mean, he is just amazing. Yeah, pretty special times. You know, Pearl Tory. Since we're 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 Father's Day Sunday, U.S. Open Sunday, Tory is just a beast. And it is, um, they redid it, what, probably 20 years ago now. And um, it's still breathtakingly beautiful, but man, is that a hard golf course to play. Jay, do the guys like it better with the changes or, or would they have liked it to kind of stay the way it was? You know, John, I don't think I don't think staying the way it was is even an option. With the way that the guys play, it wouldn't be appropriate to play a U.S. Open there anymore. Yeah, true. You know true. what I mean? Yeah. It's just it's they've, just... Done, they've done special things to it, and it's a public track, which makes it, I think, even that much more special. Um, it's it's it, it's uh, it's fun to play. It's fun to be there. And it's certainly fun to watch on TV. Yeah, I mean, and the landscape is just you know second to none. You see the Pacific Ocean out there. Black's Beach is right down there, which you know you and I know well from our days of plowing around uh, uh, Southern California and. Um, and the whole Father's Day component, I mean, I, I just love the fact that the USGA has latched onto this date, never come off of it. Uh, John, one of the things that um, I want to talk about a little bit, and I know you've experienced this with me, and I'm sure you've experienced it yourself with your dad, uh, you know, no longer being with us, is the people that come up to you and they talk about how your dad uh, had affected them, and you don't even you may not even know this person. You may not even know that right. this this relationship happened or this whatever this um, experience happened that that affected this person in such a positive way. And someone did it to me just a couple of days ago, and I and it just brought me back to my dad and this whole Father's Day thing, and just how, kind of how I'm tying it all in. Well, I think it's cool, and I have been with you on many occasions when people would come up and. Say, hey, I watched your dad play ball. He was fantastic. Sometimes, didn't they give you a card, one of his baseball cards, want you to sign it, or or some other memorabilia? Uh, I always just thought that was so cool. You know, when you're growing up, uh, you know, dad's dad, but you don't realize that they had a, they have a, had another life and they would have another life, their job, their career, whatever the case is, and they're they're not just influencing you as as their son, uh, they're influencing other people day in, day out. And it was kind of cool because we we're both lucky to have good fathers to have people come up to us and say how impactful our father was in their lives. No, I, I mean, no, no question about it. I can, um, I don't know if I've told this story on air or not, but I can remember I was in the last group at um, Hartford, which will be the tournament next week, uh, the Travelers. And um, uh, I was just getting ready to play. There were three or four minutes before I was teeing off, and I hear this guy go, Jay, 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 you know, and it was a New Yorker, kind of New York accent, and I was like, come on, you know, just let me play. I just, I'm ready to go. I want to go. I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to do my thing, and something happened, Pearl, in the group in front of us, and there was a delay, and so this guy was just relentless, Jay, Jay, and, I, and so I, I turned around, and I said, hey, how, how's it going? And he said, I'm really sorry to bother you. He had this scrolled up little um, uh, holder, a uh, little almost like the the tube at the end of the um, uh, saran wrap or the aluminum yep. foil yep. with a picture of my dad on the 1949 Yankees team. Awesome. And I said awesome. to him, I looked at it, and obviously this was going on, and I felt like about a foot tall, and I said, <laughs> Wow. You know, thank you so much. I put this in my bag. I said, I got to go play. But I really appreciate I, I said, are you sure you want to give this to me? And he goes, I've, I I do. I, I thought you'd really enjoy it. I loved watching your dad play. That's awesome. And I was like, man, what a, you know, what a cool thing to to do. Um, you know, of course, leave it to me to be kind of pissed off about it before I got it. But, um, you know, the timing <laughs> wasn't wasn't perfect. But, man, I so appreciate that stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that is going to do it. We got another show in the books. 
Well done. That's fun to listen to those stories and uh, and have another superstar on your show uh, with Dan Hicks. And uh, congratulations on another great show. Thanks. What, what do we got coming up next week? We have got Mike Maddox, who is happens to be the pitch, current pitching coach for the St. Louis Cardinals. F- unbelievable human being, but he holds a distinction that very few people in the entire world do. He made two hole-in-ones in one round of golf. Of everything he's done in his life, that's probably the highlight of his sports He loves career. it. He is a great guy. I can't <laughs> wait for people to meet him. But that's going to do it for this show. So, uh, me, thanks for taking care of us, Pearly. Go on fishing. Go night crawler hunting, whatever it is you do. And uh, hit him straight St. Louis.